now we will be starting the new series and we will be starting with the first subject and that is anatomy and we will be going through the various important questions which have been previously asked and which are expected ahead as well so these will be most likely clinical scenario questions and i would like to have your due concentration towards the questions options and the explanations so let's start with question number one a surgeon noticed a swelling in the axilla on detailed examination and investigation it is found to be a component of a normal breast tissue extending to the axilla the most likely swelling is so we have a examiner who notices a swelling in the axilla and the most important point is that it is found to be a component of the normal breast tissue extending to the axilla and the options mentioned are axillary tail of spans lake of styles milk line and sub plexus of sapi now you have to remember that there are many terminologies which you have to know associated with the breast say for example nipple say for example areola say for example montegbury tubercles say axillary tail of spans foramen of langer lack of styles milk line shoots line or sub plexus of sapi so as far as the surgical anatomy of breast is concerned you have to be well oriented with the terminology so if it is a student who has read the books well let it be any book he has studied he or she has studied you will be able to come across the answer very quickly and the answer would be axillary tail of spans because the axillary tail of spans is a projection superior lateral quadrant of the breast is prolonged towards the axilla and this normal breast tissue goes through an opening within the d fascia which is given the name as foramen of langer so foramen of langer is an opening through which the axillary tail of spans which is a component of the normal breast tissue and has been asked in this question is the actual answer so the answer to this question is axillary tail of spans and i would like you to go through other terminologies which i mentioned just now what we mean by montegmary's tubercles what we mean by the sub lymphatic plexus of sapi milk line from where the breast tissue originates and the lake of styles so i will not be going through across most of the other uh, explanations and the options which are there but important point is that you have to remember all these points this is the way you study breast in addition to the lymphatic drainage of the breast in addition to the various other terms associated with the breast like puri orange polymastia and multiple other things like gynecomasia which are frequently frequently and frequently asked now question number two so we have the question number two a 35 year old female has pain numbness and tingling in the right and little fingers followed by loss of sensation and motor weakness the most likely cause is so this is a female presenting with pain numbness tingling in ring and little fingers so it is the ring and the little fingers and the loss of sensation and motor weakness so there are options given are carpal tunnel syndrome the cubital tunnel syndrome the ape thumb deformity or the ape thumb syndrome or the guyon's canal syndrome now there is this important nerve which is the ulnar nerve and the ulnar nerve is responsible for supplying sensations to the ring and the little fingers and also supplies the motor and the sensory component to this area of the hand so this ulnar nerve you have to remember that it passes through a canal which is given the name as guyon's canal and the compression or entrapment of the ulnar nerve within the guyon's canal causes pain numbness and tingling in the region of the ring and little fingers so you have to remember that this is an entity other than the carpal tunnel syndrome in which the median nerve gets entrapped so this is the entrapment of the ulnar nerve within the guyon's canal and it is treated by surgical decompression of the nerve within the guyon's canal so this is the way the questions are asked and this is the way you have to remember now going to question number three now we have this question number three over here 
a student is reading about the pyramidal tract, the most important statement would be that the decussation of the pyramidal tract occurs at the level of. So as you are well aware of the fact that this corticospinal or pyramidal tract is a very important descending tract and it decussates. Now the question from neuroanatomy simply asks you the decussation occurs at the level of corona radiata, midbrain, pons and medulla. So as far as the corticospinal tract is concerned, you have to remember that the corticospinal tract descends and once the corticospinal tract descends, it descends and causes decussation and in the medulla, the pyramidal tract decussates and once the pyramidal tract decussates, the pyramid is a swelling which is formed in the region of the medulla because of the crossing of the fibers of the pyramidal tract. So basically, the pyramidal tract decussates within the medulla and this is a very important fact that the pyramidal decussation occurs in the medulla of the nervous system. So pyramidal decussation is an important factor and you have to remember it occurs within the medulla. So this question, one from the breast, second from the upper limb, the third from neuroanatomy, you have to remember. Now, we come across a question from abdomen, question number four, a student is studying vasculature of adrenal glands, which statement is true about the adrenals? Superior suprarenal artery branch of renal, middle suprarenal artery branch of abdominal aorta, inferior suprarenal artery branch of phrenic, left suprarenal vein drains into the inferior vena cava. Now, you have to remember that adrenal gland is a very important gland and it has got its blood supply, I mean to say the arterial blood supply from three branches, superior suprarenal artery, middle suprarenal artery and inferior suprarenal artery. And you have to remember which artery is a branch derived from which vessel. So as far as the superior suprarenal artery is concerned, it is derived from inferior phrenic because the this part of the suprarenal lies below the diaphragm and the inferior phrenic would be the nearest vessel to cater to it. So superior suprarenal artery is a branch of inferior phrenic. Then the middle suprarenal arises directly from the abdominal aorta and the inferior suprarenal artery is a branch of the renal artery. So you can remember IAR, inferior, uh, I mean to say superior suprarenal, middle suprarenal, inferior suprarenal, IAR, inferior phrenic, aorta and renal artery. So IAR, the superior is a branch of inferior phrenic, the middle is a branch of abdominal aorta, the inferior is a branch of renal artery. Now, as far as the venous drainage is concerned, it's also important. The right suprarenal vein drains directly into the inferior vena cava, while as the left suprarenal veins into the left renal vein usually. Though there is a lot of variation within the vasculature, the drainage of the arteries and veins in the renal and the suprarenal area. But this is the standard format you have to remember. So this is very, very important. So this question from abdomen was asked. Now, Question number five, a neurologist is teaching nuclear of nervous system. Which statement is appropriate? The amygloid nucleus is situated in. So here the examiner asks you about the location of the amygloid nucleus. Now the options mentioned are occipital lobe near cuneus, vermis of cerebellum, temporal lobe close to uncus, and thalamus at the posterior end. Now if you would remember that amygloid nucleus is a very important nucleus and this nucleus is situated basically in the temporal lobe. That is very important once you have the section of the brain and you just have a look at the amygdaloid nucleus, you will see that the relation of the amygdaloid nucleus is in the context of the temporal lobe. Though amygdaloid nucleus is a very important nucleus and it has got influence on many factors on the personality and as also in relation to the heart rate, blood pressure and rate of respiration. But the amygdaloid nucleus location is asked here. We are not asked about the functions of the amygdaloid nucleus. You can remember that the amygdaloid nucleus lesion also calls Clover-Buckley syndrome and that is 
characterized by personality changes like hyper orality, hypersexuality. But here we are not concerned about that. This is by the way I am telling you, which is a question asked in medicine though. But here anatomy, amyloid nucleus, and its relation to the temporal lobe. So this is how the questions are asked, and this is how you have to answer. I hope that these five questions of mine will help you in knowing and preparing the way we just answer and come to the conclusion of the answers and the questions. Thanks a lot.